Backtracking is a search or traversal method which is used to solve problems that can be framed as navigating through a free structure. It is used in scenarios where you need to explore all the possible paths in a tree to find a solution. And the simplest example of backtracking is to determine whether there is a path from the root to a leaf in a binary tree without encountering any zeros. And if there is a path we return true, otherwise we return false. So we need to start searching from the root of our tree. If the current node is null, meaning it doesn't lead to any leaf, we return false. Another condition will be if the current node's value is zero, which means that the path contains zero, we will return false. And our base case is when there is no left and right children of the node, which means that this node is a leaf node, we will return true in this case. And otherwise we recursively check the left and right subtrees. If either subtree returns true, meaning a valid path is found, we propagate true upwards. So we first check if there is a valid path in the left side of our tree. If it's not, then we check our right side of the tree. And if we don't find any answer, we return false. Otherwise, if we found a valid path, we return it upwards and we return true at the end. The time complexity of this algorithm will be O of n, because in the worst case we have to go through every possible scenario. Now let's consider the same example, but in this case we have to return the full path to the node instead of returning true or false. So in this example it would be 10, 7, 9 and 6 path. In this case we need to modify the backtracking algorithm to also keep track of the path as it explores the tree. So we will again start from the root node and we will define a helper function backtrack and our base case will be if the node is null or its value is zero and if either of these is true we will return null otherwise we will add the current node's value to the path list. The other base case will be if there is no left and right children of the node which means that it's a leaf node and in this case we will return the path of the node. And otherwise we recursively check the left side of the tree and return that path. And if there is no path found in the left side, we check the right side of the tree and we return the path from the right side. And if we didn't found any paths from the left and right side of the tree, we pop the last node and start exploring the left side of the upper tree. And if we didn't find any path in our entire tree, we return null from the backtrack function. And then we return the result of the backtrack function, which will be either null or the path to the node. The time complexity of this is also O of n, and in general, the worst case of backtracking algorithms is O of b times n, where b is the branching factor, meaning the average number of children at each node, and n is the depth of the decision tree. This is because in the worst case, you might need to explore each possible path in the solution space. Some other classic problems and use cases of backtracking are puzzle games, for example Sudoku solvers or n queens problem, which is placing n chess queens on a chess board so that no two queens threaten each other. And the solution requires that no two queens share the same row, column and diagonal. Some other examples are combinatorial problems like permutations, which is generating all possible arrangement of a set of items where the order of arrangement is important or combinations, for example finding all possible selections of a set of items where the order is not important. Backtracking is also very useful for subset problems, like subset sun, which is finding the subset of a given set of integers, or knapsack problem, which is selecting a subset of items with given weights and values to maximize the value in a knapsack of limited capacity. And as we saw, it's very good for pathfinding and graph problems. For example, Hamiltonian cycles, where we find a path in a graph that visits each vertex exactly once and returns to the starting vertex. And also for maze solving, where we need to find a path from the entrance to the exit of a maze, navigating through open paths and avoiding blocked ones, like the zero example that we saw. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.